In one hour we get more energy from the sun than all that used by the whole human race over a whole year. Because Australia's actually held the world record for silicon solar cell efficiencies now for, for most of the last 20 years. Many you know, politicians, they don't think solar is powerful enough to power everything in our lifetime. The population will get increasingly worried about what's going on and there will be an increasing pressure for the government to do something about it. For a country that is so aware of the sun, why as a nation are we unaware of its potential? In 1999, Professors Stuart Wenham and Martin Green from the University of New South Wales were awarded the Australia Prize for their developments in solar technology, producing the world's most efficient solar cell, a record they've held for almost two decades. They are internationally recognised as world leaders in solar technology and research. In 2004, Professor Martin Green established CSG Solar in Germany, manufacturing solar cells for the German population. Germany has this thriving industry making these solar cells and the, the industry is developing very rapidly and the technology is improving very rapidly as a consequence. Similarly, Chinese-born Australian Zen Rong Shi, who studied with Professor Martin Green at the University of New South Wales, in 2001 relocated to China and set up SunTech Power, a solar cell manufacturing company. Today, Zen Rong Shi is Australia's fourth richest man, was recently listed in the Forbes Top 400 list, and his solar cell business is worth over $5.5 billion. The Chinese government really created some concession policy. So like a you know tax tax reduction, a subsidy and and so on. So really become very attractive you know for the company to set up the manufacturing and operation in China. Undisputedly, Australia leads the world in solar technology, a fact that is recognised internationally, yet at home remains relatively unknown, forcing our top researchers to utilise the technology overseas. You know historically and uh, you know up to now, you know Australia has been uh, leading. The PV technology internationally, so especially in generating new ideas and uh, in new technologies. And on the other hand, Japan and Germany are doing well in commercializing this new technology into mass production. Because Australia has actually held the world record for silicon solar cell efficiencies now for, for most of the last 20 years and has developed some of the most successfully commercialised technologies as well, even though those technologies tend to be commercialised more overseas than they are here, nevertheless they were developed here. People say it, Australia provide the PV industry with leading technology, but at home, you know, there's no application. If Australia leads the world in solar technology, then the question is why aren't we using it in our own backyards? Well, I think uh, Australia in a sense is very lucky that we have a lot of coal, from the point of view that it enables us to generate electricity very cheaply. But I think in terms of the development of re renewable energy technologies, it actually um, retards the growth of those technologies because those technologies just aren't able to compete because our electricity is some of the cheapest electricity in the world. So I think if we're really wanting to accelerate the use of renewable energy technologies in, in the world, we really need to have our electricity prices that are more comparable with uh, what other countries have to pay for their electricity. So for instance in Japan they're paying something like four times the amount for their electricity and in many European countries it's, it's triple the prices that we're paying for electricity. Now if, a, if we had a, a mechanism by which our electricity was actually three times as expensive here everyone would cry foul, foul, foul play but the reality is we'd then be more comparable with many overseas countries and then the renewable energy technologies would be far more able to compete. Alternatively you want a situation where the governments here, I guess, are supportive by introducing things like feeding tariffs, the type of scenario that governments overseas have been introducing to encourage the use of the technology and to make it more cost effective. The government-run feeding tariff schemes that are currently being used overseas have been particularly successful in Germany. Professor Martin Green believes it's a scheme that can be implemented worldwide and in Australia. The way it's set up in Germany is that the electricity that uh, the private systems generate gets sold back to the electricity supply company. So they have to pay a fixed price for the electricity set by the German uh, legislation, so set by law in Germany, and the rates that they get paid are guaranteed for the next 20 years. The German people can actually install these systems and make profit from it. The scheme that's um, being used in Germany uh, definitely can be implemented around the world. So in Europe, other countries like uh, France, uh, Italy, Spain, 
um, and Greece have all implemented very similar schemes and uh, there's a push for the whole of the European Union to adopt a very similar scheme. So if Australia has the technology, the know-how and it's working overseas, what needs to happen next? The Australian government really need to initiate some incentive program very, very quickly and urgently to promote the, you know, uh, solar energy application in Australia, especially, as I just said, Australia has a leading technology in the industry. I think the best thing that could happen for photovoltaics in Australia is for the government to adopt a similar scheme to what's been adopted in uh, Germany. The way to make it happen is to get groups that are trying to promote the use of renewable energies to focus on that as the uh, objective that they're trying to achieve. If that becomes the focus and there's a very clear example of uh, Germany and other European countries to point out to, that is going to make it easier for the scheme to get accepted here in Australia. So I guess it's pointing to the fact that we need an environment here in Australia where um, people see the renewable energy technologies and in particular photovoltaics as, as being a more attractive, cost-effective option. If everybody you know, does a bit, I think the solar is powerful enough to do, to do all this. So we need to educate you know, government and politicians more. And uh, really I think uh, you know, Australia need to catch up. Otherwise, you know, Australia will be you know, left behind.